Origin Gems from Musuji Reacts, and this is How to Survive a Nuclear War by Channel Kazakhstan Nutshell. Oh, this is so good. What do you mean how to survive? It's like a lot of every lot of things you can like fallout, fallout, basically fallout, everything fallout. Fuck it, even there is a TV show fallout. Yeah, it's gonna be fallout. It's gonna be Red Roach's death close definitely. When you die, you're gonna like you know reload basically. That's what life's gonna be. Okay, I don't know. There's gonna be life after like a nuclear war. After. Humans are humans can be like cockroaches in a way. Sure, I can see humans surviving. And it, it's gonna be very different. Anyone who survives is gonna be very different, right? A human that was like 10,000 years ago is not the same as today in many ways. Sure, it's like on like biological level, it's similar, but a lot of things are different, right? As a, if you go back 10,000 years now, you can't just have a conversation with a human. And even if you find a way to have a conversation, There'll, there'll be a lot of things every single second. It's just like, what what, what, what do you want about? It's like completely different. Both of you can't just like understand each other, even if you understand the language. So it's like, I feel like something's going to be like that. It's going to be completely different human, right? Not in, immediately after the war, but that's how it's going to develop because world is going to be different. We are how we are because of the world and how the world has trained, right? Human strength is like learning from the past and learning from the ancestors. That's how the world works, right? Someone do something there, it works, and the whole world adopts. Uh, a whole world takes things from history and basically makes it better, and everybody just follows. Following is the thing, basically, uh, what makes humanity better, right? And that's what, uh, I guess, molds us into what we are. That's why we can understand someone like from the other side of the world, implying if you understand the language. I think you know human will be coming to it, but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be so awesome because it's cousins that video. I always look forward to cousins that video, whether it's science, mostly it's, hopefully it's science, or a topic about like what ifs and like concept like this. So let's always one. Remember, we'll flag makes and don't forget to subscribe. So I know we start videos to react tomorrow. Uh, check out the Alexander. There's a link in the description. And if you're wondering why I'm holding this mic, one thing I realized like Yetis are good if you hold it like this, which is like, isn't it supposed to be studio mic? But okay. Oh, okay. Nuclear war would forever split human history into anything that happened before and the post-war apocalypse. In the worst case, mass fires consume everything within tens of thousands of square kilometers, killing hundreds of millions within hours. But the worst part comes after that. Nuclear war could trigger a nuclear winter that might kill billions, maybe even completely collapsing our civilization. How does it work, and what would it look like? Fire causes winter. When a nuclear weapon is detonated, a bubble of gas hotter than the sun is forced into existence so hot that everything within kilometers immediately begins to burn. The as soon as I, I can already see people like fire, fire causes winter. Hmm. This is why I don't believe in science. It's like people lost their mind. Look at this ice. Look at this. How is the global warming when I have this ice in my hand, right? That guy in Senate basically said that in Congress, whatever. He's like, ah, like understand the broader picture, man, how physics works. Come on. <laughs> Whenever a topic like this comes, see, see, this is why like scientists say one thing tomorrow, scientists say one thing next day. It's like, no, it's like nuance. But, you know, there's difference. The terror bubble expands rapidly, filling the sky over its target, creating a devastating shockwave that causes most of the immediate destruction. Basically, you break a lot of stuff and set it on fire. And in the worst case, this turns into a firestorm that consumes everything and everyone on the ground. Right after the explosion, a gigantic mushroom cloud rises over the destruction like a demon throning over its perverse work. But in the following hours, a far more deadly cloud forms. The fire burning cities. Oh my god, I don't want to pause too much, but all the stories we have of like is exaggerated things or some real thing, right? We can find similarities there. Like we can find some mythical things and we say, oh, big, this happened, so somebody just exaggerated that. I can already see if this happens, like, like you said, like a demon. I can see like post war, like centuries later, when like people forgot a lot of things. People don't even know a lot of like forgotten technology and everything, like how Warhammer says, like forgotten technology. Basically intensifying that, like nobody knows anything of the pre-war thing, right? In the, those times, I can see people making stories like a demon rose, like a black cloud and like consume the world. I can already see that happening. That is insane. Obviously, religion would skyrocket. 
right usually in like the worst time uh, people look to higher power so yeah forests or fields heats up so much air that it creates its own microclimate and wind system hot air and hot smoke rise pulling in fresh air from the surroundings and fresh oxygen stoking the flames even more this creates an updraft and forms a colossal pyrocumulonimbus cloud that carries the soot and aerosols from the flames high into the stratosphere. Under normal conditions, the soot rising from a big fire is quickly washed out by rain. But a pyrocumulonimbus cloud can reach altitudes well above the height where rain clouds form. Once above the tropopause, there's simply no weather to remove soot from the atmosphere, so it can stay aloft for years. If this happens to a single city, it's a tragedy, but a fairly local one. But in a full-scale nuclear war, warring nations following the cold logic of mutually assured destruction could use hundreds or even thousands of nuclear weapons all at once, creating hundreds of firestorms, sending up to 150 million tons of soot, a cube the size of a skyscraper, directly into the stratosphere. In the man, did he just make this video because of that Putin thing going on right now? Putin is talking about weapons from space or something. I feel like that's exaggerated shit. Like I'm gonna, I, I like to psychoanalyze thing, and only psychoanalyzing thing I can do is like, I don't th like. There are also polls like, who do you think is gonna cause, uh, like nuclear war? China, Russia, U.S. What? Okay, I don't think Russia is gonna do that because I, I don't think Russia can afford to, right? Uh, you have to be like really aggressive uh, in a, like your power and like, oh, I'm so powerful type of way. If you even want to think about nuclear war at all, that even then, I'm not so sure. All the things that happened in the past in Ukraine, doesn't matter what front uh, Russia's like, oh, we're fine, we're stable. We are, we are like looking at ways to bad, do better. I'm pretty sure they already know like things are not looking good, right? This is not the time for them to basically just use nuke as a fuck it like let's die all together that's nobody likes that right so i don't know i don't think any super weapon thing is coming from russia at least at least that's what i hope i don't know <laughs> next few days and weeks the soot begins to blanket the earth at high altitudes absorbing light high above the ground and preventing sunlight from reaching the surface this is not like science fiction where the sky turns dark and the sun disappears Winter is what happens when just a little less sunlight hits the ground, and now suddenly, a lot less sunlight gets through. Yesterday, the world was normal. Today, nuclear winter begins. Winter causes hunger. How bad nuclear winter would be is still an active area of research. It all hinges on one thing. How much stuff will burn really hot? How many firestorms will be caused by the heat of the explosions? This depends on many factors, from the materials a city is made of, to the time of the year, if a forest is nearby, and so on. So just keep in mind, we're working with some assumptions. Here's the good news. Nuclear winter is not permanent, and definitely no new ice age. The effects on the climate only last as long as the soot remains in the atmosphere, which is at most a decade or so until it clears out and temperatures normalize. The bad news is that this causes almost immediate climate change within a few weeks. It disrupts our climate system faster than any living being can adapt to. In this new climate, our seasons are suddenly all wrong. Winters are much longer, summers shorter and colder, or gone altogether. This also means less evaporation over the oceans, which means less rain and maybe large-scale droughts. This is bad. But I like how basically people in like <laughs> Alaska and other places, basically at the poles or close to the poles, like, okay, I didn't know. Did the, did the weather change? What the fuck? It's always ice here. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, wait a minute. There was a nuclear apocalypse. I didn't even know that. Apparently, there's no internet here. You know, complete. I, there, are, there are places like, you know, where there's no cover, there's nothing, right? Which is like still insane to think about, like in 2024, like people living in conditions like that. I don't know, like. I could see myself leaving those conditions for a bit, but not permanent. But yeah, it's like, you know, internet doesn't work. But it's like coverage is not there. People like that wouldn't even know that there's a war or something, right? <laughs> because our food eats the sun. Without good summers and enough rain, growing seasons shrink or even collapse. The majority of humanity lives in an area called the mid-latitude, a strip of land that has the ideal temperature for our species, not just because it's not too hot or cold, it's also where the plants we eat grow best. The vast majority of the food we eat stems from a few highly efficient crops 
that are mostly produced in a few very agriculturally productive regions like yeah india is like agriculturally really good because of his monsoon season i'm guessing because of himalayans right if the himalayas wouldn't be there i don't think india would be like that i don't know like uh, it, it like all the rain pours there rather than going to the china or something right so uh it's supposed to be desert. Most of India, where I'm living right now, is supposed to be a desert. I, I should be like, look outside, it should be just sand everywhere. It's not because of this monsoon season, right? Something in nuclear war, after nuclear war. Monsoon season is still going to be there, but now it's going to be what? Acid rain? Nuclear rain? I think we're all fucked. That's what it is. Even if people survive somewhere, I, I think India is going to be fucked. Like the US Great Plains or Ukraine. From these bread and rice baskets of the world, they get traded and shipped around the world. In the worst case of a full-scale nuclear war, the temperatures in the mid-latitudes will probably stay below freezing for several years. Nothing at all can grow under these conditions, and the world's bread baskets would suddenly turn empty. If food production crashes, the world's food producers would very likely ramp up prices or even stop selling food to other countries if they're still able to farm their fields at all. It's easy to calculate how many people can be alive on Earth. You take all the calories we can produce and divide them by what the average person needs to survive. If you have more people than calories, then within a few weeks, you don't anymore. Humanity has only a few weeks supply of crops and food. Not I like how he's saying like, everybody's just going to be like, okay, somehow everybody's gonna like commingle and everything. Even if like shit, you know, shit hits the fan, even like a basic thing, people create this kind of like a group mentality and just like power struggle, like power vacuums rises up. Some people have like real dominance has a lot of things, other people are starving. So I think something like that would happen. Even if there is a food to go around for everyone, certain powers will hold it. There will be like a kingship and thing, monarchy would rise up, let's just say, because why would it not? Only shit is good, then d democracy rises up. When things go bad, it's like always going to be postural, militaristic things, right? Uh, even however basic level. So it just, most people would starve just because of that. Because some group of people will ho hold it where there's power, I guess. Not enough to survive this drastic drop in production. But the climate is not the only issue. Modern industrialized agriculture is a complex affair that relies on functioning supply chains to provide unthinkable amounts of industrially produced fertilizer and chemicals to kill weeds and vermin. Massive numbers of specialized modern machinery is plowing, sowing, harvesting and distributing. After a nuclear war, especially if the countries that produce the food were part of the nuclear exchange, there may simply be no more fuel, fertilizer or machine parts because there are no more oil. You might, you might need to check those. When you're wandering through the street, you need to check those gas stations for cigarettes and things. Cigarette cartons are going to be like profitable. There you go. Refineries, ports and other essential infrastructure left, damaging global food production even more. Okay, so now that we've set the stage, let's look at what science says about the actual wars that could happen. Actual nuclear war. I like how, I like how someone's sitting in front of a corporate, like, corporate office like, God. I could die right now, just like uh, <laughs> nuclear clouds comes like, finally. <laughs> Anything better than this corporate shit. Today, there are two main conflicts that scientists think about when making calculations of nuclear winter, a nuclear war between India and Thank Pakistan, and, India and one between the US and Russia. Not the enough. most likely smallish nuclear exchange would be fought today between India and Pakistan, with relatively low yield weapons. Even in a pretty mild nuclear war like this, I don't think it's gonna be. In, I don't. I think people like overestimate how much friction there is between India and Pakistan. It's over one region, sure, but not at that level. Recently, like at mass in Pakistan, when the economy was falling, everybody was praising how Indian government is working, how Modi government is working. Even their own prime minister was praising that. So they see something like, okay, it's like one of your siblings, like doing better type of way. And yes, there's a friction over land, just like there is friction between siblings when it comes to property. This is basically something like that. I think there's going to be chance of nuclear war between India and China rather than India and Pakistan. I don't think it's happening between India and Pakistan, right? If like it, it becomes that much of intense, I think that people will sit down and just like come to some kind of agreement. I don't think India, Pakistan is going to go to war. It's... It's not as it was uh, decades back, right? China and India. It's like China is like, oh, Arunachal Pradesh is ours. This is ours. That is ours. 
right? There is some reports of like China meddling in Manipur and things like causing friction just to make it more unstable that area. So I think China and India could happen, I don't know. The immediate explosions would kill around 27 million people, which is horrible enough. In just a few hours, more people would die than in all of World War I. The ensuing fires would not cause a nuclear winter, but a mild nuclear autumn. But even this would disrupt the climate and thereby global... I think depending on how many cities get nuked is going to be a much higher number than that. ...agriculture, enough to starve up to 250 million people worldwide. Well, Unfortunately, go. India and Pakistan are in an arms race and have been increasing the number and power of warheads in their arsenal. The next stage of escalation... Yeah, but it's like how many we have anyway, like 40, 50 or something. It's not like, yeah. China is like 400, US Russia is like in thousands, so it's like increasing, but how much? Would be war with hundreds of nuclear weapons, the bombs and fires destroying many major population centers and killing over 100 million people. 40, 50 is the number I'm saying, like how much they're rising in, right? A war on this scale would cause a nuclear winter that would damage global agriculture enough to cut the available calories for humanity in half. The number of people that starve to death would be as high as 2 billion. One in four humans alive today. The worst case scenario is a full-scale global war between NATO nations and Russia, or China, which also continues to build its nuclear arsenal. In a war between a former, future and current superpower, thousands of nuclear weapons could be detonated. In a scenario with around 4,400 nuclear weapons, 360 million people would perish right away. We have no other event to even compare the death and destruction to. It's like humanity dropping... I mean... To me it feels like isn't that number really small? Like, if like uh, major cities get bombed, I, I think it would be... I don't know, wouldn't that be number be much higher? Like, nowadays most people live in cities, kind of, right? And there's like 8 billion people. Wouldn't that number be in billions? That is surprising. And is he dropping an asteroid on itself? The nuclear winter that follows such an apocalyptic war would tank human calorie production by as much as 90%. Not only would almost all of our agriculture take an immediate and deadly hit, the climate would take at least a decade to recover. Because a war like this would specifically hit the world regions that produce most of the food for humanity, recovery will be much, much harder than with other conflicts. Within two years, the global death toll from starvation could rise to about 5 billion. In mid-latitude countries like Russia, China, Canada, the US and much of Europe, only a few percent of the population might survive. Humanity will never be the same again. While nowhere is truly safe, some nations in the Southern Hemisphere may fare well enough to endure while the rest of the world collapses. All the nuclear weapon states are in the Northern Hemisphere, so a few countries like Australia, New Zealand and Argentina may be able to endure for a bunch of different reasons. Yeah, Aussies are going to be fine. Who would have thought that? It's like, <laughs> there you go. Go to Argentina, Falklands, I'm guessing, right? Uh, anything in South, right? Australia, you're going to be fine. But even the Africa, South Africa is going to be fine too, right? Why are you just talking about that? Isn't South Africa there? Oh, yeah. Their nuclear winter would be milder. They have a lot of livestock that would not be as affected as crops, so they would probably stop exporting food and focus on keeping their own people alive, assuming they aren't invaded for their food by other starving nations. It's safe to say that the world would become extremely unpleasant for a long time, and it's impossible to know how many people would have died when the nuclear winter ends. In the worst case, human civilization could collapse and the survivors would be thrown back thousands of years, slowly trying to recover a world full of scars and graves. Eventually, when they've rebuilt civilization, would they ever build nuclear weapons again? We know for sure that we need to do anything we can to make sure nuclear war never happens. This video was supported by Open Philanthropy. If you want to know what you can do to reduce the risk of nuclear war, you can either support expert organizations or become a citizen expert yourself and learn more. We've compiled a list of further reading and expert recommendations in the info box and our sources doc for you. Thank you so much for helping us clear out the Kurzgesagt warehouse for our big move. But watch out, sometimes creepy things are hiding behind those boxes. Wild dread appears.
What will you do? Quick, grab something from one of those boxes to defend yourself. You used or it's very effective against dread. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there you go, people. Ah, uh, yeah. New post war is like it's so unpredictable. Like this is the best way because that did it right. Even then, this all could be false. It will be completely different, right? That's how unpredictable it is. But this is the best way to see it, I guess. I can. So basically, South Africa, Argentina, Australia run there. As soon as nuclear war starts, just like basically run there. Like how are you gonna run there though? Planes are not gonna work. I don't know. Take a dinghy boat. And Basically, people like, you know, uh, investing in like bunkers and things. No, you should invest in like boats and things. Whoever has a yacht is kind of saved, I'm guessing. Just take a boat to sort of fill the boat with like enough resources, go to South Africa, watch for pirates, I guess. I don't know. Run for Australia if you can. I don't know, depending on where you live. I don't think you can go from US to Australia using a yacht. Can you do that? The Pacific is like really big. I don't know. Maybe you can do that. But yeah. So what would happen after post-war? Will you be alive? Yeah, I think you'll be, you'll wish you were dead. Let's just say it's insanity, and it's we are making light of it, but anything can happen, right? I like to say like, oh, Russia's not gonna do it, but nobody knows what's going through anyone's head, right? Uh, a lot of things can break a man psychologically and everywhere, and I don't know like where is like Putin and Russia's mind is. Fuck it, like, let's go to, I don't know, that could be the case, and it's like, oh my god, like, everything could come to a halt, right? If, like, let's just say, US, Russia bombs uh, one of the cities of, U or any place of US, that's gonna be like Pearl Harbor, but, like, intensified, and US's hand is in everywhere, I think nuclear war is gonna trigger in all around the world, because everybody will get involved, right? Iran would get involved, China would get involved somewhat. And because of that, India will have to get involved as well. If China gets involved, if China gets involved, Pakistan's gonna get involved. I don't like alliances. This is why, right? World War One happened because of like grouping of people. All the countries, enemy of my enemy is friend, and like all become group. That's why it became a world war in the first place, right? So I hate it because of that. Like you know, if if that gets involved, I have to get involved. If that gets involved, others is gonna get involved. Like that. That's just insane. Alright, well, uh, if you like my next one, subscribe and yeah, I'll see you next.